everyone, this is Vanessa. Welcome to Collide Center Ministry Online. This is Wednesday Night Live. We hope that you have had a great week and we are excited that you are joining us. First, we would like to let you know that we are giving away a free DoorDash order at the end of broadcast. In order to enter, you need to like and comment before the video ends. We will announce the winner in the comment section at the end of broadcast, so stay tuned and good luck. All the information you need is emailed out in our newsletter each week. So check it out and let us know if you need help getting in. Thank you all for joining us. We're glad you are here. Remember to like and comment for a chance to win the prize and share this video to help others see it. All right, this is the game of phobias. We're gonna put a word on the screen and you have to try to figure out which phobia is this word talking about. So you probably have not heard of these, but give it your best shot to try and determine what is this word talking about. So here, you'll figure it out, here's how it goes. Hylophobia, is this the fear of forests and woods or the fear of comic strips? Go ahead and write in the comment section, what do you think this is referring to? Hylophobia, the fear of forests and woods or comic strips. They got a nice Garfield comic. The Garfield, what a fat cat. I don't know, are there any scary comic strips? I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna go with the fear of forests and woods because that sounds like it might actually be scary. The answer is, yeah, forests and woods. So you guys get the game, let's play, uh, let's go through some more. Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay, cophobia. Oh yay, cophobia. The fear of yogurt or the fear of appliances? Okay, personally, neither of these are scary uh, to me, but I think if it was one or the other, appliances are scarier than yogurt. So what do you think? The answer may surprise you, it is the fear of appliances. So yeah, the refrigerator, maybe even like the, the like microwave might be the scariest appliance. Let's look at some more. Chatophobia, the fear of your own hair or the fear of rug burn. So the way I'm doing, I'm guessing is just what I, what I think might be scarier and rug burn is awful. Like rug burn is the worst. So I'm gonna say that shaytophobia is the fear of rug burn. What do you guys think? Um, that lady, she's real freaked out about her hair though. And the answer is <laughs> the fear of your own hair. That is nuts. All right, keep going. A, a blue toe phobia, a blue toe phobia, the fear of the color blue or the fear of taking a bath. Okay, so this is, um, this has to be, actually I have no idea. You guys write in the comments, tell somebody by you, what is a blue tophobia? The color blue or taking a bath? The answer is the fear of taking a bath. Okay, interesting. Maybe, I don't know why, but you, you're just afraid of it. Um, okay, whoa, okay. Anatidaphobia. 
anatidaphobia, the fear of Tuesdays, or the fear that somewhere in the world a duck is watching you. <laughs> no! What is that? Why? Um, man, the fear of Tuesdays would be like, okay, once a week, I'm like really, really nervous. But if I'm always afraid that somewhere in the world there's a duck watching me, that sounds horrible. It, I don't know. The answer is... The, oh my gosh, you guys, I just need to know, is this real? Are there really people that are like, somewhere there's a duck watching me? Oh man. Um, let's do a couple more. No mo phobia. <laughs> no mo phobia. No mo. Fear of smelling farts, no mo phobia. Or the fear of losing your cell phone. Now that's a real, like, that's real. Um, mostly because I lose my phone all the time. What do you guys think? What is this referring to? The answer, fear of losing your cell phone. Yeah, very real, very common for me to lose my cell phone. And I'm a little paranoid about it actually. So maybe I've got no homophobia. Last one, phobophobia, phobophobia. It's the fear of Vietnamese soup. Interesting, I love Vietnamese soup. So that's just me personally. Um, or the fear of fear. I'm afraid of being afraid. How do you get, like, how do you conquer the fear of fear? Um, because then if you're not afraid of fear, do you fear more? And then are you more afraid? I don't know, that's, that's difficult. But phobophobia is, okay, it is the fear of fear. Well, now you guys hopefully just learned a whole bunch of words. Um, I'm not trying to make light of this. If you're afraid of ducks watching you, then good luck and you're okay. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be just fine. to the water with my basket be swept away in the current of your mercy and I know I'll never be the same there's no limit to your promise Jesus you have done it all for me Jesus you have done it all for me Into the water, 
And your love is overflowing From within me and it won't run dry There's a limit to your promise Jesus, you have done it all for me Jesus, you have done it all for me With a love that flows so deep Wash over me, wash over me Forgiveness in the water With a love that flows so deep Wash over me, wash over me Salvation in the water with a love that flows so deep Wash over me, wash over me Would any of you be brave enough to admit that you are still afraid of the dark? Even as a middle school, high school student, parent, adult, whoever is here with us, would you, would you even be brave enough to write in the comment section or tell somebody near you that I am still super afraid of the dark? You know, I'm 30 years old and I still find these moments where I am either walking by myself in the dark, maybe I'm even here at the church building, locking everything up, turning off the lights, closing all the doors all by myself, and I've just got in the back of my mind that somebody's about to jump out and get me, or some kind of monster's about to sneak up on me. And I don't know if it's just because I've been playing Among Us all the time, but like I'm, I'm being just suspicious of like what's out there that I can't see. Right, the, the lights turn off, I'm in the dark, and all of a sudden everything makes me paranoid. Every noise I hear, every shadow I see, every kind of corner and mysterious spot where I don't know what's over there, I don't know who is waiting for me. You know, I love scary stories, even though they, they freak me out, they're a lot of fun. 
until I'm alone, you know, later on in the dark thinking about it, and then I'm really freaked out. You know, I loved growing up, we'd go camping, and I loved that we would go and, and build a big fire, gather around and tell a ghost story or two. You know, my, my family loves that. We get some friends, tell some good stories. And of course, you gotta get some kind of light, flashlight, lighter, get it right up to your face, right? And tell your story. So, you know, scary story. You, you get it going, everybody's freaking out. And then, all right, time to go back to your tent and go to bed. And I remember this one time as a kid, we stayed up real late, we told scary stories. And then that night, there was this crazy storm that blew in. So the, the wind was blowing and all these branches were, were hitting together and creaking, making these crazy noises. The wind was ruffling up tree, uh, tree branches and, and leaves and different things in our campsite were blowing over. And then every time there's a flash of lightning, right? It was this crazy, like almost claw shadow across the side of the tent, making these crazy images of, of monsters and, and arms that were reaching out to grab and rip through the walls of the tent to get you. And all night long, just hearing the noises, seeing the shadows, and just having every thought that this is all coming to a horrible end at any second, until finally, the sun comes up. And then all of a sudden you realize, everything's okay. Right? I mean, there's a few branches on the ground, some of our stuff blew over, but I'm still here, my friends and family are here, the world didn't end, and what I thought was a bear was really just a possum. You know, it's okay. Like what I thought was this crazy, horrible monster is just a tree. Everything's fine. You know, speaking of possums, it just reminded me, uh, one of the very first like really adult things I got to do was buy a grill. Like I just, I was so excited to have my own grill to grill some burgers and steak and chicken and, and just enjoy that. And so we got this grill, set it up on the patio, had it for about a week. And uh, Emily and I were sitting downstairs right outside like the back patio window and it was late at night, it was super dark outside and I could see something from the woods in the backyard came up onto the patio. And we were, I was like, what is that? And we turned on the light and it was a possum. I was like, okay, whew, thank you light, it's just a possum. Unfortunately, the possum climbed up onto my grill and started like, lump, lump, started licking my grill um, which made me really mad and it was really gross. He was just sitting there having a great time just licking my grill. And then I realized I need to buy a grill cover. But the point is, the light turns on and we realize that the world is not quite as horrible as we thought it was, or at least we realize that there's a lot more hope and the shadows were lying to us. The darkness was lying to us, that, that there's more goodness going on now that we can see. And this is true of our lives, right? Like there's all of these moments in life where I'm being told that everything is over, this is horrible, we're not gonna make it, I'm not gonna get through this. And then I find some light, I find some comfort, I find some truth. That yes, some things are going wrong, some things are very difficult, but we're okay, we're going to get through this. There's moments of life where I feel like there are no answers. This is too complicated. I'm not gonna figure this out. And then the light turns on and then I have an opportunity to see, oh, there is more information. There is more answers. I just need to find a way to get there. I, I might be stuck in a shadow right now, but I'm, I'm growing closer to the light day by day. And as I talk and pray and learn, I'm getting there. There's moments in life too as well where I feel like in isolation, in the shadow, where the light has been turned off, I'm all alone. I can't see or feel anybody else. I feel distant, I feel cold. And then the light comes on and I realize I'm not alone. I've never been alone, that God has always been with me, that there are more people that pray for me and care for me and love me than I've ever realized. But the light has to show me that. You know. Honestly, it all goes back to this moment in my life where I was stuck in sin, I was stuck in my brokenness, and I didn't know how to get out. And the light who was Jesus made me realize and understand that Jesus took care of that. If I place my hope and trust in him and I begin this journey of walking with light day by day through a dark and broken world, then Jesus and I, with the power and truth of his light, that we are going to find salvation. And that's the journey that I'm on, and it's the journey I hope you are on. The truth is, you guys, this is one of the greatest 
and most important battles in the universe. It's the, it's the battle of the universe. The, the, the truth and the light and power of God versus the evil and shadow and lies that are existing in the kingdom of evil. There's two kingdoms, there's two powers, there's two, there's two sides. And then there's you and there's me. And where do we fit in on this? You know, a lot of times, again, this is ghost stories and not so spooky series about the Holy Spirit. A lot of times we love to focus when we talk about spiritual battles. We talk about angels versus demons. Like they're these up in the sky having this battle and we're just down here eating popcorn, uh, going to school, playing among us, having a great time. But the truth is you and I are right in the middle of this fight. You and I are the point of this fight. Are we following and living in the light of God? Are we following and living in the shadow, uh, in the darkness of, of evil? You know, you guys, like, let's, let's just call it what it is. We are not perfect people. We don't live in a perfect world. You know, one of our questions for tonight for small group time is, what evidence is there that our world is broken? Like, what are some things you can think of and point to to say, yeah, our world has a lot of darkness in it. Our world has a lot of shadow and lies and evil in it. I think there's going to be a lot of examples, you guys. Um, that's just the reality of where we are. It's the reality of who we are. But here's the key, and here's, the, again, the love and hope of God, where God tells us, I see you, I know you, and I love you. That just because today is broken and there's shadow in our world doesn't mean that there isn't hope and wholeness in God in the future. So we, when we choose to follow God, we are day by day moving closer to the light. Not a complete, I made a decision to follow Jesus and now I'm perfect, my world is perfect, my life is perfect. It's a day by day, I'm growing closer. I'm on a journey, I'm taking step after step to become more focused and filled with this light and love of the Holy Spirit, the goodness, the light and love of God. So this is a battle going on where you and I, if we are followers of Jesus, we ought to be taking step after step, moving closer, but the shadow is still pulling and grabbing and desperately fighting us to say, no, come back, back to the shadow, back to my lies, back to this place of mystery, of paranoia, isolation, and loneliness. We see this play out in so many different ways. We wanna look into this example. We're gonna be in Ephesians chapter six, to kind of highlight this even more for us. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. Right? So God is offering us mighty power. Put on his armor. God is offering us armor to protect ourselves so that we can stand firm against the strategies of the devil. So the light is calling us and we're supposed to be moving step by step by step closer. But man, the shadow is smart. The shadow has a strategy to pull rope, drag you back out of the light and into the shadow. That's all it wants to do is drag you farther from the light, farther from the hope, farther from the truth to leave you abandoned in isolation. So there's strategy there. Verse 12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but we're fighting against evil rulers and authorities of an unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Now, that is kind of spooky, right? Like, this is the Holy Spirit series. We said a not-so-spooky series. But to me, that is spooky. There are real forces. There are real forces fighting against us. Real forces lying to us tempting us, pulling us, and begging us to stay away from the light. But we will continue to say and continue to know and believe that the power, the light and goodness of God is greater than the fear and the hopelessness of evil, right? That the light, the Holy Spirit that was in, is in us is greater than the evil spirit that's in the world. So we have the power to continue moving forward. We have the armor to protect us as we go, as the enemy throws daggers, shoots arrows, you know, tries to lasso a rope and pull us back. We have the power and the strength and the armor to keep moving forward. 
So here's some of the things that we kind of wrap up this idea and we're gonna continue this again. Please come in every week and check these videos because we wanna continue this conversation. But here's just kind of a quick look at this and we're gonna get some, some more specifics into some of these topics. But I just wanna lay the, the, the foundation here. The, 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 the kingdom of shadow, right? The kingdom of evil is trying to pull us back. The kingdom of God is trying to lead us and fill us with light and love. So which one are we going to listen to? There's no middle ground. I'm either moving forward or I'm moving backwards. There's no, there's no standing still, all right? This is not like, it's kind of like shoots and ladders. Like you are either moving forward or you're sliding back, right? There's no, I'm just gonna stay right here. So the Holy Spirit is the voice, is the presence. It is the Holy Ghost of God, of Jesus in our hearts and in our mind. Right? It's written in the words of the Bible. It's being written and poured into our hearts, into our minds. And it's going to lead us to what is true, whereas the shadow is going to lie to us. So let's, let's talk about that conflict, right? Am I moving closer to the truth or am I being pulled into a lie? The lie of the shadow would tell you that you aren't good enough. That you aren't good enough because you have made too many mistakes. You don't know enough. You're not old enough. And you just aren't really worth it. Right? That's the, that's the lie and, and the shadow telling you that. Whereas the light is telling you that God knows who you are. He's known everything you're going to do and everything you've ever done. And he loves you so much. Even with everything God knows, and he knows everything, he sent Jesus from heaven to earth to die for you on the cross so that he could be with you forever. So it doesn't matter what you've done. And even though you're a teenager, God invited Mary as a teenager to be the mother of Jesus. God invited teenagers to follow him, to be his disciples. And God is inviting you to change the world because he knows you can. Another lie from the shadows is telling you that the world is so broken that it could never be fixed. That there's just so much going on. There's just so much falling apart and so many things are broken that there's no hope. There's no hope for us. But the Spirit is telling us and the truth is telling us, and we can even read right here in John 16, that I have told you that you will have peace in me. Here on earth, there will be trials, there will be sorrow, but take heart, I have overcome the world. These are, these are the words of Jesus telling you, yes, there are some things that are really, really hard. There are so many things that are difficult, but take heart and have peace. You are not alone, and God knows you, and God loves you, and God has overcome these things. There is a hope. There is a future. Always. You are loved and known, and whatever the whisper is telling you, whatever the lie is telling you, don't listen. Move to the light and see. Find it is true and good that God knows you and God loves you. God is telling you you do not have to be afraid. That even when the, the water is high and the storms are big, that you are not alone, that God is with you and you are known and you are loved. So as we continue this series of Holy Spirit, I hope that these words are part of God's words telling you that you are known and loved by God, that you and everything you do matters to God. Your life matters. So we're going to continue to talk about how do we move step by step with the light to grow closer and to move and act and lead in God's kingdom, to move away from the lies and, and the pain of the shadow, to move into the kingdom of God, to continue to grow and love and live in the name of Jesus. We love you guys. We're praying for you, and we'll see you again soon.
It's who I am. It's who I am. 